Mike, um, obviously you were one of the great heavyweights of, of, of all time. What, kind of um, what's your, what, what are your views on today's heavyweight scene? Is it as, as good as it was? Are you um, excited? I think it's good. It's probably um, not exciting the way people are used to. They used to a lot of exciting. They used to a lot of drama. It's almost like a soap opera, you know, um, when we were fighting. It. But um, it's very calm and very um, serene because the champions are that way. The Clinton's a great fighter. You can't take that away from them, though. You know, you can't blame them. They beat everybody that's in the, the division. And um, we just used to, like, rambunctious fights. We want action. We want packing. These guys are very sophisticated. They're stand-up boxers. And it's just um, what the people are getting used to, you know? And um, we find a guy that's exciting like that. You know, it never stays dull like this for all long. It's probably been a long period, but you always find somebody that will like to be exciting. Do you hanker after those days when the heavyweight scene was quite as exciting as it was then, Mark? I don't know. It's not like I miss it anything. I think the Clips are very exciting. They're fighting very um, often as well. They don't do well probably in England and America, but when they go over to the Balkans, they sell out in Germany and they do very well. What about the, uh, the greats? Are you familiar with the, the British heavyweights? There's quite a few, particularly David Hay. Yeah, I know David Hay. Um, David Hay is a really good fighter. He impressed me with the Klitschko fight. I thought the Klitschko was going to beat him really easy, and he put up such a real good fight. So um, I was impressed with that. You know, I've learned to gain more respect for David Hay as time went on and watching the fight as he progresses to a mature fighter. You think he's got time, Mike? Because obviously the Klitschko's, one of them's probably going to retire very soon. The other one's probably got two, three years left maximum. So. Um, I think um, if he keeps fighting and keeps um, getting more experience, I think yeah, he'll be champion. That's Mike. Mike, can I ask about Ricky Hatton? He's, he's about to make his comeback. Do you he is. He's fighting again. Do you think yes. he's yeah. 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 he yeah. yeah. Well, listen, um, with a fighter, it's very tricky. You know, he has to know when it's time to retire. You know, we may say, hey, retire, retire, what the hell are you doing? Retire, you're crazy. And then next thing you know, he hits the champ on the chin and he's champion again. And so, what do we know? So, um, it's up to him to find that out. Yeah, you, had, you had comebacks in your career. How difficult is it to, to come back once you've had a break? It's really difficult. You know, um, you have to be consistent. This is the sport that you have to be consistent. You know, Floyd Mayweather is a great champion, but you got to be consistent. You can be champion for four, you'll be undefeated for 14 years if you fight once a year. You know, you got to be four or five times a year. That's how you get it better and better and better. And that's just what we learn from experience. The more you do something in anything, the better you are. Mm. Does the idea of Ricky coming back excite you, though? Well, yeah, yeah. If he's excited about it, it excites me. If he had the same vigor and hunger. Some people just need time off. Because Ricky was pretty active for a while. Sometimes he needs time off, and he's been in a lot of tough fights. Sometimes people just need time off to regenerate their batteries and... um. And we saw that it does happen and it becomes successful. Mike, what advice would you have for Ricky coming back after such a long layoff? Um, just take it very easy. You don't have to go on over your head to prove that you're tough. Just go in there, take easy fights, boom, build your confidence back up, get comfortable to being back in the ring. And yes, it's all about um, having your pride and ego in check. You know that these are the proper procedures that we have to go to reach the destination that we claim to want. And, you know, and that's just basically what it is. You have to take a small step in everything in life. Even as a writer, even though you've been a great writer, it's start small, you can't jump back up on the main scene. Start small, you scared everybody's going to be right at you. Mike, what do you think of the American heavyweights that are out there at the minute, like uh, Seth Mitchell and Deontay Wilder? Can, can one of them go on to emulate some of the greats? They can't beat the, the Klitschko. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to know right now. Now, if they're great, now what they can do, can they beat the champion right now? Yeah. That's all that matters. If you can't beat the, and the guys, the only people we know are the Klitschko. They're the champions, they're the only people that matter. You know? If anybody else wants to matter, they have to beat the people that matter. Would you have walked through them in your era? They would be tough for anybody to fight. I know anybody would hate to believe that these guys are going to be tough for anybody to fight. And that's just, and we don't want to believe it because sometimes we get stuck on apple pie in our era. We like Chuck <laughs> Berry, we like Elvis, we like those guys more than the guys we like now, the uh, Supreme. But that's just not what people as we get better is meant. Just from the cavemen to now, we're supposed to get better. From the 80s to now, we get better, we get more. Um, technology, we get, we make more people are made, we get more money, the, every, the world is bigger and we become better. So those guys would have been, they would have been difficult to beat for anybody that came before them.